make sure my emulator is running few things we'll get a clarity on context so log statement debug so what is actually this mean in this case uh, get class get me. so if you put this line uh, magnify it I'm putting a log statement this mean what actually what is this referring I want to test it so so if you want to see this mean what is the name of the class mean you can call get class get name so in the console it will print okay this mean it you are referring this particular class so I'll see what which class it is referring mean I can come to know like okay what is actually this stands for and for a button the event listener I'm going to slightly implement in a different way because that's where we will have a different context coming in set on clip listener. I'll put the same statement in this case what is this is right the context actually requiring an instance of an activity or a service. So, if this refers to a context or refers to an activity or service, it could be treated as a context. But if I get something else that cannot be treated as a context, where the same scenario will come in, if I put a toast, make text, I can put this some text constant length long sure. this will work without any issue but if I put here it is throwing error the obvious reason the context I mean the make text the toast make text is actually expecting instance of a con context but whereas this carried the instance of the context because this was referring this particular main activity which is of type activity so the context is there because the context is a state of an activity a kind of uh, whereas in this case this actually referring some different class seems to be because if it is not referring this main activity the obvious reason is it is located inside a different class called on click listener so we have to verify what is actually this is referring inside the on click what is actually this is referring outside of this on click let me run I would prefer, okay, let's see if I can add a filter. A console output can be seen in two ways. One is through this uh, lock cat, which is there in your Android Studio main perspective itself. You may need to add some sort of filter. In this case, the filter I have added CTX. In fact, it did not print anything, but uh, I've seen uh, it. It is having some sort of debug info on repos. It doesn't print. Maybe a bug in my system specifically. We could should print here. If not, there is uh, ADM Android Device Monitor exclusive for our debugging purpose. You can have that open and see the lock. I've seen a yeah. lot of developers saying that this particular lock ad is not reliable. The built-in one, which is coming. Uh, seems to be not reliable but I'm not sure why it is not reliable but it's there uh, I mean uh, there may be something uh, while they do the test they are encountering some issues uh, let me put some sort of filters first I'll remove all the existing filters the log name I'm expecting ctx okay got it the first log in this case 
has printed the name called main activity. So it is actually the keyword this referring an activity. So it is equivalent to a context. So no problem. But once I click the button, I may have a different scenario. So let me see once I click the button what really happens. I don't know where the button is there. Okay, yeah, here. I just click the button. This dollar one something it is putting. So it is actually not referring a class. Uh, it's not referring the activity. Something inside an activity or some sort of inner class. So typically I'm not getting the name of a activity. I'm getting something else. So that's the reason it was not treated as a context. If I refer this, actually this refers this particular class, inner <coughs> class, view dot on click listener. So if I, if you really need an instance of a context, I would recommend in such a case where the context become invisible, you can just prefix the same class name and then put at this. So this time it will clearly reflect the instance of an activity. It means the context. So where your this is not treated as a context, you can prefix the same class name of an of the class name should either extend from activity or service make sure so in this case is an activity so put the class name and prefix i mean uh, postfix that particular this keyword so in this time it will clearly reflect the uh, context because it is giving the instance or it's giving the state of your activity so if you have habit instead of uh, writing this you can always make this as a standard practice giving the class name first and then put the this whatever so this way you can uh, refer the context of a particular activity or service uh, service I had to talk but service also similar scenario I'm trying to say or there is one more way to get the instance of a context uh, that probably will also give so there is a method in uh, activity get context uh, get base context sorry this will also give you a uh, instance of an activity or uh, state of an activity nothing but the context so if you do not want to use the keyword this you can use get base context instead so so you can directly use the get base context instead of this if you if you really do not have an access to the activity uh, there is one more context exist uh, application context this is also true because the application context is the state of all the activities so in that case the specific required context will also be there so this can also be used to refer the context but uh, the application context is a heavyweight object because it's the instance of or state of all your application activities or service everything put together is a heavyweight object Whereas the base context is an exclusive instance of the specific object. So uh, if that application context will also work, but I would say I, I won't recommend it because using a heavyweight object in our application, you may go ahead using get base context alone. If at all required get application context, we can use this get application context may be useful if you try to float a pop up or something from a background activity or somewhere so which you try to get a uh, I mean uh, user notification or maybe something else where uh, the activity itself won't be enough to trigger the pop up. So that time the application in a very rare scenario I don't see that particular scenario will ever come at all. But in such a case you can use guess, get base context or you can use a plain keyword this if it is an activity. If something you are going inside a, a, some sort of inner class you may refer the class name dot this. So in whatever way what which place you are calling that makes sense of the particular keyword this okay so the context is equivalent to this only when the particular instance of the class is inherits from an activity or a service otherwise the this in the place of context won't be treated okay so that's a simple example of the how the this and the context can be put into uh, working 
okay so i'll put them everything back so we'll we have a plenty of example coming so there we'll see or we'll use a different scenarios <laughs> log also I don't want just done with that. Now we have to see uh, persisting it. We may have to add one more uh, registration page let's see because you know we'll the possible because the login we have to make it quite dynamic. Right now uh, our login is being validated using a hard coded text like admin admin which is something I hard coded. We'll give an option to register so the, that data should be used for validating so we will take the user to a specific screen. So for that to happen we have to have we have to add one more activity where we need to give option to register. So let me add a new activity. This time I am going to use this one uh, activity blank activity it is pretty easy because the manifest entry is being added directly otherwise you may have to add them register. I keep the activity uh, I mean uh, as kind of uh, like you know in every activity I put the last name as activity something to just have a reference to my files okay so this is something to do with activity for that purpose. It is not actually required but I would recommend because as I see the code I will get it okay this, this many activities the code contains uh, contain. so activity okay. And you just hit finish. So it created a layout for me and it added a entry in my manifest also. It did a lot of things. So things make uh, pretty easy if I follow this way. Rather than I end up creating a simple Java class and then inherit everything from activity, then manually add an entry to our manifest. But whatever way, all you need to understand any activity you create and should have a reference or should have a, a registration in manifest otherwise this activity would not be taken effect. I will remove the unwanted codes I mean at this point because we are not going to use the option score, option menu or context menu uh, we had to see them in detail so at, at this point I will just have them removed and I will go back to a simple activity instead of action bar activity and this is fine need to add a couple of design changes so the activity main should also contain a link for registering <coughs> so that I will move the user to another activity there he fills the form and when the form is filled he comes back again he enter the same username password and goes into login. So let us see this thing. So I have a button already, I will put one more button for <coughs> okay register this name. Okay, we need to add a string entry. This title register activity something it has added but we don't need it. I'll put some different word. New user something. So when you click, he click, we will take the user to a different activity. So okay, we added this like button and once the user click on this button we take the user to a specific activity. So it is having an ID register so now I need to go to main activity I need to initialize that button and from there I need to take the user to another activity. So let me see let us initialize the button
Okay. This time I'm going to use a different event listener for this. Register. Set on flex listener. Direct exclusive interface for this button. Okay. When the user click on register, he will be taken to another activity. So we already know how to take the user to a new activity using the class intent. Defining the source and destination, of course the source, this won't refer the context, but let me try first. Extractivity.class Start activity So in this case, this is not referring the context because this is not referring a class which is uh, inherit something from an activity. It is actually referring a class called on click listener. So this time we have a fix either adding main activity dot this will make sure the specific context is accessed. Otherwise we can use get base base context. So anything I can use. So this will make sure the user is navigated to a different activity and there we'll have to add uh, that form something we need to create. But uh, I want to make sure uh, everything goes well. So I want to make sure the button click works. So I'll just run the code. If I click on the new user, yes, I am going to a different activity. So let us uh, add some designs here. So asking the username, password, email address, male, female, interest, something, something will add it. So we just we'll have to get uh, used to our various widgets. So using this form, we'll understand how to add a radio button, how to add a checkbox, on various other interfaces. So we'll extend this UI now. So this particular UI could be extended. Uh, in an XML file called activity underscore register which was created. Uh, let me start adding them. It has a relative layout and some sort of padding stuff added. Uh, probably I'm going not going to need these all these things. The design is exclusive for the developers. Don't let the Android Studio give you some sort of recommendation. Uh, this text we also I'm not going to need. I, I, I'm not going to prefer the relative layout because it's going to be a, just a form. So I'll use a linear layout. When you use a linear layout, the orientation has to be specified. Okay. Okay. So we have to decide how many, uh, I mean, string entries. For example, uh, resources to be registered. So I'm going to need username. I'm going to need password. I'm going to need email. I'm going to need a gender, uh, male, female, interest. Checkbox also we'll see. Um, interest may be business, travel, science, education, something for choice. And uh, what else we can keep? Edit text already been given. Okay, fine. These things. So a couple of things we are going to ask the user on. Uh, before just registering uh, this particular application. So before adding any design, maybe I can go ahead and add a string file. So various uh, string entries which I'm going to use in this application. So I'm going to switch to string in source folder. It's vice versa, it's not something you should follow this rule. You can very well have them design done, then you can come here and add, add an entry. But I have a habit because I keep the resources ready first. Uh, so let's see how things goes on. So username text already I oh, I, I already have that entered I think. So the username password stuff I'm not going to enter. Maybe uh, gender.
Okay. For mail. Why don't we leave that thing also? These people are also. Okay, something so we'll have to give some sort of other thing uh, like uh, ability to cancel and register so we'll give two more string I think register is already there okay, it is being defined as a okay then complete register. So we have added a couple of string entries those things we are going to use in our application while we create our layout and uh, with the design. So it's up to you of course uh, once you have a design then you come back here and do it otherwise it's up to you. Oh. I think hint also we can add. Okay hint is already there okay no problem let's proceed. <laughs> Sorry, is this this one? Yeah. So let us start adding the entries. So first one, the text view, match parent. This is to have a text label. So upgrade string. Is the name text. Text size slightly will make it bigger. It looks so smaller. Style set to bold. We'll check whether it's too big or small. Okay, it's fine. I'd like to keep some sort of margin because I always prefer to have a margin in place or padding in place. I seriously don't like uh, touching. To the corners of your UI so let's give some sort of margin I've given 10 dp margin for the entire layout so this margin has been uh, the outer space has been given for this layout and the username has come slightly in it. and of course go ahead and add the edit text so that's also match parent content we need to have a hint Username. That's the username hint we haven't given. Give a ID. This username ID is different. That username ID is different because it is in this layout. Let's see how things. I prefer some margin top added so 10 dp oh, it's not looking good okay. so 
I'm going to repeat them. So username, password, adder, okay, that's a couple of other things. Uh, for gender. We are going to need a radio button, right? Only one choice. For agenda. Radio button is pretty simple. Similar, there is a radio button widget. So match parent, wrap content, add text. Mail, I think. Yeah. ID also. You'll give ID also mail. Okay, put a gender. Give the same ID. I guess it looks unique. Okay, we have a gender, but uh, we are going to have some issues. Uh, I'll let you know what kind of issues I'm going to see. Just I'll run the code. See this I got this form, no problem. The problem is see this one. This is not expected UI, all things get selected. We want the radio group. It should be group, of course, because only one choice at a time. So shifting to another one uh, and this will make uh, one particular radio button alone selected. So we have to group them. So there is a way to group it. Make sure you wrap every all radio buttons into a layout called radio group. Match parent. Wrap content. Radio group it is similar to a linear layout. In fact, that's why I said it's a layout. But it is exclusive for radio buttons to group them so that one single choice could be maintained. Uh, it also have a orientation capability. So all things going to appear one by one only. So what I'm going to do, I put all the three buttons or radio buttons inside this radio. Group. So these buttons have been grouped now. So the choice will shift between these three. You'll see them. Now if you notice only one choice is being maintained. So shifting to another one make sure the particular one get disabled or probably unchecked. So when you have a radio button make sure you group it under a layout called radio group so that these things could be grouped and one individual choice could be maintained. This is only for radio buttons.
check boxes you don't need to worry because check box uh, the way it is going to work is going to hold the multiple choices so we don't need to have them place okay let us complete this one i think we have added a couple of things uh, we have a username password uh, we'll have to make the input type password we don't want to have these things visible next one more text view for interest or maybe newsletter subscription or whatever way you can think interest and we are going to keep check boxes this time Put them. Then we have four. I remember business travel. things okay so things are getting good and I want to have two buttons for register and cancel I'll keep a register button here the cancel button over here so so user can choose one Going to keep a relative layout. Because relative layouts kind of helpful to keep uh, maintain uh, extreme directions. Tipping a button. button Very big. Oh, it's match pattern, but it's insane. Okay, let's go. Pardon? Okay. So we give something. I'm not pretty convinced to start with that's fine I 
give you a couple of padding. Uh, sorry, text view. Margin top some 20 dB so that things will look like a group. So this is one group and this also will give some padding. Okay, be fine. It looks fine, but uh, we forgot one thing. This uh, AVD I'm running is a 4.7 inch, 4 inch phone, which is a bigger phone. So the view was pretty bigger. It accommodated all my view. What if the user use a smaller phone called 3.7? This is a smaller phone. You see the button, there's no button because the view itself was very small. The button disappeared because there was no space because the height, the relative layout had an inner child occupied plenty of space. Uh, there is no button. I couldn't see them. So in such a case, if you want to, if your form gets so bigger, where your phone screen is smaller, uh, we have to add some more options so user can scroll it up and get back the buttons. So we need to have some sort of scroller put in. Linear layout won't put the scroller by uh, scroll, scroller by default, and we have to add it so that the smaller screen phone also displays our UI. So for that. I may have to do something. I'm going to encapsulate everything to a scroll view. There is a scroll view exist. I'm going to move these schema definitions to scroll view because now the scroll view is going to become a parent for everything with match parent height. We can give scroll view or wrap content because scroll view will come only when there is no space. So I'm going to wrap everything. So the entire linear layout right now put into a scroll view. So if at all the view gets smaller or the phone size gets smaller, it will automatically add a scroller so that the user can simply swipe up and get back the invisible view. So in this case, uh, I may not be able to show you clearly, but since I added the scroll view, it put a different layout for you. But uh, if you run in a smaller screen phone, you will get the scroll bars. So user can simply swipe up and see the additional uh, component. So I'll go back to Nexus 4 anyway. So that's what I'm doing here. So the scroll view been added, everything fine. Pardon? If we cancel, we cannot log in, that's all. Forget about it. Right? Registry is there, right? Oh, sorry. Okay, 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 cool. I think we added one entry, I don't know. Oh, register complete. Complete register. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we have added and we make sure all IDs been present, others, <laughs> education, checkbox, radio button. Plenty of things been added now. Time to test. Okay, see, I think the scroll is already there, so I could see them because 
I purposefully add a couple of uh, margins to make the view explode or overflow. So, okay, let me add a couple of more margins so that the scroll how things goes on uh, for our testing purpose. So, let me increase the margin which I gave for the text view or for a grouping. I'll make it uh, 40 because I'm going to explode so that the view uh, appears. So, this, this for The text size and just need to edit the margin top to 40 dp. <coughs> so I just added few more margins. So I'll I'll just see how it adds the scroll bar to see the additional contents when the view is not having more space. To 